If you've recently purchased a new Mac or upgraded your Mac OS to a new version, you may have noticed in your Steam library a little prohibited symbol next to some games. This symbol indicates a 32-bit game, which as this web page explains, is no longer supported under any operating system later than Catalina. While this means that you can no longer play these games under Mac OS, there's almost always a Windows equivalent that is available in your Steam library. If you're running an M1 Mac, your only options in this case are emulation in the forms of crossover or parallels. Unfortunately, with M1 Macs, Boot Camp is no longer an option. In this video, I'm going to explore the performance differences between parallels and crossover for 32-bit games. I will be exploring the differences in 32-bit performance between crossover and parallels, which you'll see are quite radically different. For the most part, if crossover can run a 64-bit game, it will run it much better than parallels. However, as you'll see, the situation for 32-bit applications is quite different. I will be exploring the difference in performance between crossover and parallels with two 32-bit games, namely Deus Ex Human Revolution and Classic Skyrim, which is a 32-bit game, not to be confused with the Special Edition, which is actually a 64-bit game. As you can see here, I'm going through the process of installing Deus Ex Human Revolution on Crossover. However, it's not necessary for you to see the rest of this process, so I'll skip through this part. Now that Deus Ex is installed, we can run it and get a baseline for performance. I've set the game to run at 720p, but as you can see, it's taken an unexpected form. We'll adjust that in a moment. Here I'm going to set the resolution to 720p and set the settings as low as I can and turn off all the visual effects. As you can see in the upper left hand corner I'm getting performance data with Steam's built in overlay. Unfortunately it does not always work with 32-bit games in parallels and crossover so it may not be possible to gather that exact data but you'll still be able to see the relative performance of the games in terms of how responsive they are. Here I'll be turning off all the visual effects in order to give the game a chance to run as fast as it can. Unfortunately, that's not very fast, as you'll see. And now we can actually load a save game with minimal settings. Now as you can see in the upper left hand corner we're getting absolutely abysmal frame rates here. 3 to 5 FPS, which is absolutely unplayable. Most games under macOS suffer from an initial period of stutteriness due to the game building its shader cache. However, in this case, even waiting several minutes, the game does not improve in quality. And actually here, you can see that the frame rate is so bad, I can't even control my movements or even fire the gun. While the keyboard remains somewhat responsive, the mouse is doing nothing at all. There, the shot finally went off. Given this frame rate and lack of responsiveness, the game is completely unplayable in this state. And unfortunately, crossover just will not work for this game, and a lot of other 32-bit games as well. Next we're going to try Deus Ex under Parallels running Windows 11. You'll see here that the game performs much, much better than it did in a crossover. And I'll go into some of the reasons for that in a moment. 
Unfortunately, I was not able to capture frame rate data with this, but you'll see that the performance is much better and the controls are much more responsive in this game. To get an apples to apples comparison, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 720p with low settings and all effects turned off. And now onto the actual gameplay. I will point out that whichever emulation solution you choose, be it parallels or crossover, the load times are obnoxiously long. Due to that situation, I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to the actual gameplay itself. Now unfortunately I was unable to capture actual frame rate data with this, but you'll see from this gameplay footage that the responsiveness is much better than it was under crossover. Here you can observe there is some initial stutteriness due to the game building its shader cache. That will pass after a couple minutes of gameplay as you'll see. While trying to guesstimate actual frame rate is difficult, I'd say this is running about 45 FPS just based on the responsiveness and the fluidity of the picture. Now that the game has had some time to build its shader cache, you'll see its performance is much better. Much, much better than it was under crossover. There is still a bit of stutter and lag, but the game is definitely playable. This stands in stark contrast to the performance we're seeing under crossover. The camera is now moving smoothly and fluidly, with very little lag and stutter. Now that we've seen the performance of one game under both crossover and parallels, we'll try another game, Classic Skyrim. As I mentioned before, this is a 32-bit game in contrast to the modern version, which is called Special Edition, which is actually a 64-bit remake of the original Skyrim. Here you can see me setting the baseline settings for Skyrim, which are going to be 720p low, just as they were for Deus Ex Human Revolution. In a moment you'll see how this game performs. The frame rate counter in the upper left hand corner looks promising initially, but as you'll see when the game actually loads, it's not very good. Since these loading screens take a while, I'm going to go ahead and skip through this and go straight to the gameplay. As you can see here, we're getting frame rates in the mid to low teens. While some could play a game like this, I would not want to go through 100 or more hours of Skyrim with this frame rate. This is a puzzle room in Skyrim where you have to hit these spinning switches in a particular order to proceed through the game. Failing these puzzles will demonstrate certain graphical effects that I want to demonstrate the really poor performance you'll see in the situation.
demonstrate the difference in performance. Here we're in Parallels under Windows 11 trying to run Skyrim. You can see that it's auto-detected high settings, but in this case we're going to put it back to low so that we can do an apples to apples comparison with crossover. Fortunately, in the case of Skyrim, I was able to capture actual frame rate data in Parallels, which is a bit of an oddity. Usually in Parallels, you cannot get frame rate data even with the Steam overlay. As with Deus Ex, we'll see some initial stutteriness as that once again the shader cache is built up. Even so, you can still see that the game is running much higher frame rates and is much more responsive than it initially was under Crossover. The reason that Crossover runs 32-bit games so poorly is because of Apple's removal of 32-bit support in Rosetta. If Rosetta supported 32-bit games, these games would run much better. But because of the lack of support, Crossover had to write their own 32-bit code to run 32-bit games. And that hampers the performance quite significantly. As you can see, gameplay is much more fluid, and frame rates are very high. Very high, in fact, over 100 frames per second, which I'm quite surprised by. Performance in the outdoors, where there's a much more complex environment with many more objects to render, is not this good. Despite that, performance in outdoor areas under parallels is quite good, and very playable. I'm going to go ahead and trigger the trap one more time to demonstrate the effects under parallels, and you'll see that it, even here with a whole bunch of effects going off, it runs much better than crossover. There is still a bit of stutter and lag, but I would consider this very playable. And as previously mentioned, a lot of the stuttering will smooth out over time as you play the game. As a final demonstration of Parallels graphics processing power, I'm going to demonstrate Skyrim running with an EMB and several graphics heavy mods to show you exactly what Parallels is capable of. This will not be a fair comparison with Crossover because of the fact that Crossover can't even run the game with EMB or other graphics mods. Now here I'm going to go ahead and load the same save game into a heavily modded version of Skyrim. This is using several graphics heavy mods that improve the looks of the game, but also cause performance issues. Despite that, Parallels handles it very well. In this indoor area, you'll see we're getting in the 30 to 40 FPS range with occasional dips, but outdoors, this is unplayable. There is more stuttering with these graphics mods, and it's debatable whether you would consider this playable or not, but the frame rates are still decent in the 30 to 40 FPS range. As it is, I wouldn't try to play this way, but this is an interesting demonstration of Parallels and Crossover. This concludes our demonstration of the capabilities of Parallels and Crossover. In short, if you want to play old 32-bit games, Parallels is your best choice. Crossover does a better job with 64-bit games, at least the ones that can run, but for this kind of game, you do want to get Parallels in order to get your best performance. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.